Hi, Emily here from Homemade Emily Jane. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a little DIY sewing project to make a bunting banner using pennants just like this one. Well, I'll be sharing how I make a pennant flag bunting banner using the AccuQuill pennants die. Um, but I'll also share there are other ways that you can make it as well without using AccuQuilt. I'll be making my pennant bunting banner for my baby room, but this could be really fun home decor for lots of different things. It could be seasonal home decor. It could be something that you use for a party. Um, so lots of different options for what you might want to do with your bunting banner. Before I get started cutting and sewing, let's go over some supplies that you'll need to make your pennant flag bunting banner. Um, first off, as I mentioned, I am using the AccuQuilt pennants die. I'm gonna use this triangle shape. So you'll see I have the die right here and I'm actually just gonna use this one shape to cut out all my flags. Um, but you also have the option if you're not using AccuQuilt to use rulers. So I've got a couple different triangle rulers. They're not quite as narrow as the AccuQuilt die. So you'll have to use your own sizing for yours, but any triangle would work. This is the uh, triangle squared dot, um, ruler, or you could use a 60 degree ruler. Or if you don't want to buy a special ruler, or maybe if you want your flags to be a little bit more narrow and pointy like the AccuQuilt die, you might even just make a template. So that's an option too. So lots of different options for cutting out your triangles. Um, and throughout this tutorial, I'll show you how I use AccuQuilt, but make it your own, of course, for whatever size and shape you're looking for. Besides the cutting equipment that you'll need, you'll also need a few basic things. First off, thread. I'm using Silk Finish Cotton Thread by Mettler um, in a variety of colors. And then fabric. I'm using three different colors for my pennants. And then some sort of bias tape or ribbon. So I've already gone ahead and made some bias tape. I think I made about three yards of it. A little bit less might be fine, but I wanted to make sure that I had more than I needed. And you'll see it's just a double fold bias tape. So I have folded it in half and then in half again, so that when I make the little flag pieces, I can put it inside, put a raw edge inside of the seam and then sew it shut for a nice clean finished edge. So you'll um, either make some bias tape, purchase some bias tape, or you could even use ribbon as well. So um, in a coordinating fabric or color. And then some key basic sewing essentials such as a rotary cutter, a sewing machine, needles, all of those things as well. So the first thing that you'll want to do, whether you're cutting with AccuQuilt rulers or templates, is to prep your fabric. I've already gone ahead and pressed my fabric and trimmed it down to the size that I need. So if you're using AccuQuilt like I am, a seven and a half inch by with the fabric strip is perfect. Um, or if you're using a template or rulers, you can kind of decide what size you want your little flags to be. Um, as I mentioned, seven and a half inches is great. And I did that for all three of my fabrics that I'm using today. And you can use as many fabrics or as few fabrics as you want for your project. I personally chose three fabrics and I'm gonna kind of lay them out with this citrus color in the middle and then um, accenting with this orange and this green. The key thing to keep in mind before you start cutting is kind of planning how many of each color you're gonna want. Um, for each pennant, you're gonna want to cut out two of that color so that you have a front and a back. So I'm gonna cut out um, six of the citrus print, four of the orange, because I'll have two pennants that are orange, and then um, I believe eight of this green. So it's gonna be mostly a lot of green in it. Um, and I'll show you how I decide to lay it out as potential design option for you. But of course, make it your own. If you're using AccuQuilt, then go ahead and grab your AccuQuilt machine and get it set up. Um, I'll just use mine like this. And then grab your die and your fabric. As I mentioned how many I'm cutting out of each one, I'm gonna go ahead and layer it on so I can cut out 
a lot at one time. Now, sometimes when you are cutting with Aggie Quill, it's super important to pay attention to the fabric grain. With a project like this, I'm not too worried about it. If I was doing patchwork, it might be more important. But I'm just gonna lay my fabrics on top of my die so that I can make sure that the fabrics are covering up all of the points and the blades of the die kind of using my fingers to feel for it and then you can use a cutting mat I have the cutting mat that fits the die exactly but you could use a smaller cutting mat too because I'm just cutting out one shape on the mat and then I'm gonna fold these up nice and pretty so that they get tucked in and then feed the fabric through the machine slide it off and you should have all of your triangles cut like that um, mine are already in pairs because my fabric was folded so you'll see here i've got two green two orange and two citrus and i'll repeat that again because i know i need more of all three colors this time i can keep my fabric stacked and just rotate it that way i can get the most out of each pass through the machine most out of my fabric so now i just continue repeating that process until i have all the pendants that i need again two for each color for each single pennant because we'll end up sewing them um, together once you've finished cutting out all of your fabrics for your pennants however many you need for your project you can go ahead and grab your thread and head over to your sewing machine and we will begin by piecing these um, in pairs so taking two of the same color and putting them right sides together and we're just going to sew along the two long edges of our triangle leaving the top edge open so you'll start by taking two matching pennants so i'll start off with this citrus print and place them right sides together and we're going to use a quarter inch foot on our machine to stitch a quarter inch away from this long edge and then when we get close to this point we'll pivot and stitch a quarter inch away from the other long edge With your needle down, you can easily turn the piece. And then I'll snip off the previous one and you can see where I have my seams. And then we'll repeat that same step for our entire stack of pennants. So now once all of the pennant flags are stitched, we're gonna go ahead and trim off this little extra bits down at the point, just so it doesn't become super bulky there. So I'll use scissors here, but you could use a rotary cutter as well, just to trim off the excess, leaving about an eighth of an inch between the edge of the fabric and where your seam is, so you don't accidentally clip any stitches. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to find something pokey but not too sharp. I'm just gonna use this little tool that I had near my sewing machine. But you could use, um, if your scissors aren't, aren't very sharp at the tip, you could use those or a point turner or even a toothpick. Um, and you will begin to just turn these pieces inside out. So taking from the top edge of our pennant and then reaching down in, flipping it so that we can find the point being careful not to rip out these seams at the top as you're doing it and then take whatever pointy object you found and kind of gently glide that in there so that it opens up that point and trying to get it as crisp as we can and then repeat that process for all of your pennants And once your pennants are all turned so that the right side is out, we'll take them over to our iron and give it a nice 
press so that they are nice and crisp. Now that we have all of our little pennant flags done, we are prepping for the final step. Go ahead and take your um, bias tape um, that you made or bought or maybe even your ribbon and we're going to lay out our pennants in the layout that we want them and then we're going to pin them into place with our bias tape. So I'll start off by finding the center of my bias tape because I did mine um, I think it's roughly around three yards long, but I'm just going to find the center and work outwards. Um, that's what I would recommend doing for yours. So it doesn't have to be exact, but roughly middle. I will kind of just stick a pin right there for now so that I know where it is. And then figuring out your layout. If you haven't already planned, maybe this is where you start laying them out and you kind of decide where you want them. Um, I have a rough idea in mind already. So I'm gonna start out with my citrus one in the center. And so I'm going to put it so that the top raw edge of my pennant flag goes inside the bias binding and then fold it over. And then I'll go ahead and pin that in place so that it doesn't shift around. And then we'll move our way outwards in both directions. Mine's gonna be symmetrical. So after the little oranges, I'm going to do some green. So I'm gonna space them out maybe just a half inch apart, but it's really up to you and your personal preference how far apart you want yours to be. Maybe that's more like three quarters of an inch. You can measure it and make them super exact or you can eyeball it. I personally am just gonna eyeball it for mine. And again, pinning them in place is super, super important because we're gonna take this whole thing over to our sewing machine. So you'll see I've got it so far. I've got the citrus in the middle and then two mint green. And then we're gonna do orange on either side of those. So I've got this orange color fabric, getting it nice and tucked in there and then pinning it in place. And then you can repeat that step um, moving outwards so that you use all of your pendants or just kind of decide on how big you want your little flag banner to be. Once all of your pendant flags are pinned into place, go ahead and take this over to your sewing machine and we'll just do a simple straight line stitch to attach them all together. So I've got my nice long line of bunting banner here. Um, and the important thing here is that your thread color matches the color of your bias tape so that it blends in nice and smoothly. So I've got orange thread in my machine and I'm going to start actually at the end of my bias tape and then I'm going to end up trimming my bias tape down later. So we'll just start at one end and make our way towards the other end, stitching um, the open side. So you'll see this is the bias tape. We'll stitch it closed so that it doesn't unravel and that there are no raw edges. Now when you get to where your flags are, this is super important because we're stitching a lot of layers at once and we have the pins here to help us with keeping the flags in place, but you might just want to move slowly. When you get to the end of your bias tape, you are done with your pennant flag banner. You can trim off any excess after you hang it up, but I like to have a little bit of a tail when I hang it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the tails on mine for now until I hang it up, and then I can decide how short I want the tails to be trimmed to. I 
hope you found this tutorial super helpful and that you feel equipped to go ahead and make your own bunting banner using fabric and sewing machine just like I made this one maybe using different sizes or shapes in your triangles and maybe using different variety in your fabrics either way i hope this tutorial inspired you to express your creativity with your bunting banner go ahead and drop a comment below if you're going to make one let me know what it's for is it just basic home decor or is it for a party or maybe for a holiday i'd love to hear and i'd love to see it too so go ahead and connect with me over on social media. Instagram is my personal favorite. I'd love to see your work over there. And of course, if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy sewing.